Good day, grade 10. This is day 45, lesson 5 of An Analytical Geometry, chapter 8. It's the 5th of June and we are continuing with the gradient today. We've learned about the distance formula, the midpoint formula and the gradient. Today we're going to see how we apply the gradient. It's on page 196 of your textbook. So yesterday we learned that to work out the gradient, it's about how steep the line is. And to work out the gradient, we have delta y over delta x, which is the difference in y over the difference in x. Okay. Now the second thing that we're going to learn is that parallel lines have equal gradients. Okay, so remember, it's about uh, uh, gradients are about how steep lines are. So two lines that are parallel are evenly steep. So that means that the gradients must be equal. So for instance, if this line has a gradient of 2, then this line will also have a gradient of 2. Then number 3. The product of the gradients, ooh, it says radians there, it must be gradients. The product of the gradients of perpendicular lines is equal to negative 1. So if I have two lines that are perpendicular to one another, then the gradient of AB will be multiplied with the gradient of CD and the answer will be negative 1. So for instance, if the one gradient is um, a half, then the other gradient will be negative 2 and then the answer will be negative 1. Let's take another example. If the one gradient is 3, then the other gradient will be negative, because if the one is positive, the other one should be negative. And then I switch the fraction around, which means I get the reciprocal, so it becomes a third. Three, when I get the reciprocal of three, it will be a third. And that answer will give me negative one. So for instance, what if the one line has a gradient of negative four over five? Then the other gradient will be positive 5 over 4. Okay, I hope you see that I switch the fraction around and use the other sign. And that will be my two gradients. So, for instance, if I give you uh, that, uh, for instance, that the gradient of AB is, or CD's gradient is 2 over 3, then you immediately know what AB is gradient will be, it will be negative 3 over 2. Okay, I hope you understand it. And now, number 4, the gradient of a horizontal line. The gradient of a horizontal line is 0, always, because it's about how steep a line is. Our, our horizontal line is not steep at all, so it has a gradient of 0. We also did an example of a horizontal lines gradient yesterday in the exercise. Now the gradient of a vertical line. The gradient of a vertical line is undefined. Okay, so that line is too steep, I always say. So it's too steep, so that gradient will be undefined. Every single vertical line um, has a gradient undefined. Okay, number six is about collinear. Collinear means if I have three points that are collinear, it means they are all on the same line. Three points on the same line. Then the gradient of AB will be equal to the gradient of BC and will be equal to the gradient of AC. But I don't need to work out all of them. I can just work out two of them. I can just work out AB and BC. But those gradients will all be equal in a collinear um, when points are collinear. Alright, now what you're going to do is exercise 3, the second part. Yesterday we did the first part. So you're going to do the second part of exercise 3, number C12, D12, E and I. So quickly do that. Just press pause, do that. It's um, also in your textbook on page 198 or in the notes. You can find these questions. And then um, you just press pause and after that you can come back. Um, and we mark the exercise together. So there is the first part up to number H and there is I and J. 
Okay, now press pause and I'll see you for the exercise. Okay, welcome back. It's exercise 3 memo. So the first question says, number C1, it says, determine whether line segments A, B and C, D are parallel, perpendicular or neither in each of the following cases. Okay, so first we're going to see, we're going to work out the gradient of A, B in um, number C1. We subtract the y values over the x values subtracted. So it's 1 minus negative 3 over 2 minus negative 1 gives me 4 over 3, which is 1 and a third. Then the gradient of CD, y values subtracted, uh, subtracted over x values subtracted gives me 3 minus negative 1 over 7 minus 4, and that is 4 over 3, which is a third, 1 and a third. Because these answers are the same, the gradients are equal, which means that AB is parallel to CD, and the reason for that is the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of CD. Then number two, we're going to work out the gradient of AB, y values subtracted over x values subtracted. 1 minus negative 3 over 2 minus 1 gives me 4 over 1, which is 4. Then the gradient of CD, y value subtracted over x value subtracted. 3 minus negative 1 over 7 minus 4 gives me 4 over 3 and that is 1 and a third. Okay, these two have nothing to do with one another. 4 and 1 and a third, it's not equal and it's definitely not multiplied to give me negative 1. So, AB is not parallel or perpendicular to CD. It's neither. Okay. Then the next one is number D1. Number D1 says line segment AB is parallel to line segment CD. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a little picture I drew a little picture already there to um, just to get a picture in my mind. It's, it really helps a lot. So I have line A, B and C, D and they are parallel. I don't even draw them on a Cartesian plane. I just draw them to get a picture. So A is negative 5, negative 1 and B is negative 3A and C is negative 4, negative 3 and D is negative 1, 3. Calculate the value of A. So that little A is the coordinate of B. Because the lines are parallel, I know that the gradients will be equal. So let me work out the gradient of AB. The gradient of AB is Y values subtracted over X values subtracted. The Y values are A minus negative 1 over X values negative 3 minus negative 5. A minus minus 1 gives me A plus 1 negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So that's the gradient for AB. I just leave it like that for now. Then the gradient of CD. The gradient of CD is Y value subtracted over X value subtracted. So that is 3 minus negative 3 over negative 1 minus negative 4. And that gives me 6 over 3 which is 2. Now, because the lines are parallel, I know that these two answers should be equal. So, I set them equal to one another. A plus 1 over 2 is equal to 2. Now, I'm going to solve for A. So, I take the 2 over to the other side and multiply it by 2. So, it's going to be 2 times 2 is 4. And A minus 1 is left on the left hand side. Then I subtract the 1 to get A alone, so I get A is equal to 3. Number 2. Line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment CD. A is negative 5, 2. And B is B, negative 1. C is negative 4, negative 3. And D is negative 1, 3. So I draw a little picture for myself again. Doesn't need to be too accurate, it's just to show um, myself a little picture. Now I'm going to work out the gradient of AB. The gradient of AB is 
this y value subtracted over the x value subtracted, which is negative 1 minus 2 over b minus minus 5. That gives me negative 3 over b plus 5. Then the gradient of CD. The gradient of CD is y value subtracted over x value subtracted. 3 minus negative 3 over 1 minus negative 4 gives me 6 over 3, which is 2. Now, these two answers... Oh. Th um, I have to multiply to get negative 1. So, that'll be... 2, okay, let's say negative 1 must be equal to these two things multiplied. So it's negative 3 over b plus 5 times 2. Okay, so I can put in an extra step here that says I have to get negative 1 if I multiply those two answers. So first thing I do is I take the 2 over and divide it on the other side. So that's how I get to this step. Negative half is equal to negative 3 over b plus 5. Now I cross multiply. I multiply on each side with the thing that I had below the line. So I had negative 1 times b plus 5 and negative 3 times 2. Now I multiply the negative 1 in, negative b minus 5, negative 3 times 2 gives me negative 6. To get b alone, I add 5 on the other side, so it becomes negative b is equal to negative 1, so b is equal to 1. That's number d. Now number e. Let's just uh, read the question. Question says, show that points F, R and N are collinear if F is 3, 2, R is 4, negative 2 and N is 7, negative 14. So I just need to find the gradients of Fn and Rn, Fr and Rn, excuse me, and then I can show that they are collinear if they are equal. Okay, so let's find the gradient of fr. It's the y value subtracted over the x value subtracted and I get negative 4. Then the, the gradient of rn is the y value subtracted over the x value subtracted and that gives me negative 4. Now because these are equal I say the gradient of fr is equal to the gradient of rn. See I got negative 4 in both cases. So that means that F, R and N are collinear. Question number I. Question number I says, Rhombus A, B, C, D is drawn with A, negative 1, negative 2 and C, 3, 4. Determine the gradient of B, D. Okay, so first, let's quickly just draw um, a rhombus. So there's something that we have to remember of a rhombus and that is that a rhombus is diagonals bisect perpendicularly which means the gradients will be multiplied to give me negative 1. So I need to find the gradient of AC and then I automatically can find the gradient of BD. Okay, so first I get the gradient of AC. That's the Y value subtracted over the X value subtracted and I get 3 over 2. AC is perpendicular to BD because the diagonals of a rhombus bisect perpendicularly. So then I say the gradients multiplied will give me negative 1. It's very important to write all of this down. You get marks for all of this. Now remember, what do I do again? I switch them around and give them the other sign. So it was positive, so I'm definitely going to have negative. I have 3 over 2, so it's going to be 2 over 3. So the gradient is, the gradient of BD is negative 2 over 3. And that is it for today. If you have any questions, email your teacher.